Confronting Agenda 21, Part 2, produced jointly by Sovereignty International and Freedom 21. The Comprehensive Land Use Plan is the instrument that converts the community's manipulated vision of the future into binding law. These plans invariably contain features that only the planners know about until local residents discover that they are in violation of the law. Let's look at some examples. Local comprehensive land use plans typically incorporate international building codes. Here are some of the codes produced by the International Codes Council. Take a moment to see the scope of development governed by the ICC. Now, let's take a look at some of the detail contained in the International Green Construction Code. Here's how the ICC describes this code. The International Green Construction Code provides a comprehensive set of requirements intended to reduce the negative impact of buildings on the natural environment. What sets it apart in the world of green building is that it was created with the intent to be administered by code officials and adopted by governmental units at any level on a mandatory basis. It is designed to drive green and sustainable building significantly beyond the market segment that has been transformed by voluntary rating systems. Section 402.2 prohibits construction in floodplains prohibits construction within 50 feet of bodies of water and wetlands, restricts construction on parkland, agricultural land, and greenfields, requires an inventory of site natural resources, limits potable water use for landscape irrigation systems, requires management of vegetation and soils and erosion control during construction, requires that at least 75% of land clearing debris and excavated soils be salvaged or recycled. This is just a small sample of the regulations that will ensure code enforcement officers, not the owner, will dictate how the land is used. Let's look a little deeper into the details of the International Green Construction Code to see the definition of new terms you will find there. Daylight saturation. The percentage of daytime hours throughout the year when not less than 28 foot candles, 300 lux, of natural light is provided at a height of 30 inches above the floor. Pretty detailed. Auto DR. Demand response automated. Fully automated demand response initiated by a signal from a utility or other appropriate entity providing fully automated connectivity to customer energy end-use control strategies. This describes smart meters that electric companies are installing often without the knowledge of the homeowners. These devices can control the use of electricity remotely and thereby control the activities and behavior of the people who rely on electricity. Let's take a broader look at comprehensive land use plans that contain some of these detailed regulations and see how they are empowering government to ignore private property rights and manage a society that once was free. Well, what we're facing is a plan for growth and development that's being implemented by county council here called Vision 2020. It is a flavor or a type of smart growth legislation. And what that simply means is that a, a vision has been developed by, by planners uh, for this area. They want to dictate how growth will occur or not occur in this area. And by uh, that, that result, who will profit or not profit by that plan. And what this plan does very simply, is to lay out a vision of, of, of this area that includes the, the evolution or creation of villages. They want to force all growth in, the, in this area into villages, high-density, high-population villages. Around these villages will be drawn what are called urban boundary zones. These urban boundary zones will delineate the village from the surrounding countryside. And those two entities, the village and the countryside, will be treated differently 
by this legislation. Uh, property that is not in the village will will find that its value is is lessened, reduced, or eliminated. Property within the village will find that that property will gain a rise in value because that's the only place where development will be allowed to occur. The Golden Gate community in Collier County, Florida, is a good example. Landowners north of State Road 84 may use their land, but land south of the highway, represented in the green, has been designated as a natural resource preservation area, and owners are not allowed to develop their land. This designation destroys resale value and severely limits the owner's use of the land. Property taxes, however, continue. But when you put in a UGB, an urban growth boundary or a service area, whatever you want to call it, so that you can't get, you can't get power, sewage, water, anything beyond this point, as people are forced to come into this area, the more crowded they, they are, the more valuable the property becomes. All right, the more valuable the property becomes, the more taxes you have to pay. The more money the government has to use against you to take more property. And then in some instances, I've even seen where they used a, a law called unjust enrichment. If you have a piece of property, just for an example, that's worth $100,000, and the government passes laws that causes more people to move into the area, and because of government action, your property became worth $300,000, they'll come in and say, well, you didn't do anything to earn that $200,000. And they took that in taxes as unjust enrichment, only gave you what your property was originally worth, and they took the money and used it against you. Now, this is an actual photograph, because in Birmingham we already have the Environmental Police Force. Remember, we were talking about due process? Well, here is the very first aspect of due process, is the code enforcement officer. Uh, in, in Atlanta, Birmingham, and Mobile, it's called Environmental Police. In Marshall County and Jackson County, it will be code enforcement officers. Or in uh, Utah, it's called neighborhood preservation officers. Because one of the four gentlemen that is pictured in this uh, uh, particular photograph actually arrested Betty Perry. Now, Betty Perry is a, a grandmother. She's retired, living on a fixed income. She's a resident of Orem, Utah. Uh, and one of the uh, neighborhood preservation officers determined that she was in violation of the code for Orem, Utah. Uh, and, of course, having already cited her, was there to arrest, arrest her. And in the process of arresting her, she decided she was real, literally confused, wanted to go inside and call her son to find out what, what to do about this. Well, a scuffle ens uh, ensued. Uh, she fell, almost broke her nose on the stoop going into her house. Uh, then she was handcuffed, thrown in the back of the squad car, hauled downtown, and uh, fingerprinted and booked on violation. Now, what did she violate? She didn't water her grass. Now, uh, water in Utah is expensive. She's on a fixed income. She's trying to sell a house, and she literally could not afford to water her grass. She was in violation of the city's code. And the mayor, when it was, he was asked about this, said, well, we've already prosecuted 12 people for not watering their property, so we can't let this go. The rules and regulations contained in these comprehensive plans can be exceedingly detailed and restrictive. Listen to Ina Miles speaking to a group of property owners in Coleman, Alabama. My aunt lives on 35. She's an 86-year-old woman. She has her tomato plants out in the back of her little apartment, like a 4 by 8 little garden. They come and, and her tomato plants are down about all the time, so they said, we won't find you now. But if you put another tomato plant out next year, it'll be $150 for every day that plant is on the salt. An Oak Park woman goes before a judge. Her crime? Growing vegetables in her yard. Turns out that a veggie garden in front of the house is against the city code. Fox News' Alexis Wiley reports. The price of organic food is kind of through the roof. So why not grow your own? These are pepper plants. 
But Julie Bass's garden is a little unique because it's in her front yard. We thought it would be really cool to do it so the neighbors could see. The kids love it. The kids from the neighborhood all come and help. But Julie's cool garden has landed her in hot water with the city of Oak Park. Code enforcement gave her a warning, then a ticket, and now she's been charged with a misdemeanor. I think it's sad that the city of Oak Park that's already strapped for cash is paying a lot of money to have a prosecutor bothering us. That's not what we want to see in our front yard. Why? Well, the city is pointing to a code that says a front yard has to have suitable live plant material. But here's the big question. What's suitable? We think it's suitable. Why is this not suitable? Well, if you uh, look at the definition of what suitable is in Webster's Dictionary, it'll say common. So if you look around and you look in any other community, what's common to a front yard is a nice grass yard with beautiful trees and bushes and flowers. But when you look at front yards like this and this, is Julie's vegetable garden really worth the city's time and money? What do you say to those who say, this is ridiculous? Well, I would argue that you won't find that opinion for most people on Oak Park. That's ridiculous. I have a bunch of little children who want to take walks to come by and see everything growing. I think it's a very wonderful thing for our neighborhood. They don't have nothing else to do. They're going to take her to court for a garden. They say, you know, why should you grow things in the front? Well, why shouldn't I? They're fine, they're pretty, they're well maintained. It looks like this critical debate is headed for a jury trial, and neither side is backing down. I could sell out and save my own self and just not have them bother me anymore but then there's no telling what they're going to harass the next person about. Now there's another pretrial scheduled for July 26th. The next step could be a jury trial. The APA produced a book entitled Growing Smart Legislative Guidebook. It contains three model statutes and two model executive orders. The extensive, detailed model statutes provide for the control of every facet of land use ignoring private property rights and individual freedom. One model statute, for example, authorizes this remedy for noncompliance. Government may enter upon the land in question and act to put it into compliance. Moreover, government can collect fines for each day of noncompliance, bring the property into compliance, and place a lien on it or condemn the property and take it. A little known provision in the model statutes is what's called amortization of non-conforming uses. This program allows government to set a time to bring property into compliance, and if not met, take the property from the owner through eminent domain. This provision completely ignores the constitutional requirement that eminent domain be invoked only to take land for public use. This desolate patch of desert on the outskirts of Los Angeles County is known as the Antelope Valley. Few people want to live here, and the collection of rugged individualists who do are being chased away by what the county officials call nuisance abatement teams. Armed county inspection squads that target zoning and code violations. Fahey was convicted of 12 misdemeanors. He's been jailed and forced to destroy his own home. This guy had this property for sale for a good price. So I came out here and looked at it and said, wow, this is pretty, pretty cool. Joey Gallo is a retired Army veteran who served during the Vietnam era. Last year, the county began performing unannounced inspections on his property. Government came out and they told me that my bushes and stuff out here had to be cut back. I said, okay, no problem. Finally, the county made a demand that shocked him. They told me, you know, you have to get off the property. I said, you know, I get off the property. He said, well, yeah, you can't live here. All of a sudden, I got police at my front door, bulletproof vests, guns, and then they surrounded the place. Everything I worked for, you know, was like, like just melting away from me. I don't know where I'm going to go. I really don't. Oscar Castaneda has also been ordered to destroy his own property. Castaneda and his wife grow their own food, supply their own power with solar panels, and their own water from a well. Their green energy lifestyle is a choice, not subsidized by the government. Castaneda lived in the desert for 22 years without any help from or problems with the government. The city and some other cars 
drew right into my property. They said that they were here to help me. You don't know the rights, you don't have any. Members of the nuisance abatement team began pointing out compliance problems, too many vehicles on the property, improper water tank, and so on. All of these, the county said to him, are a nuisance and a danger to his neighbors. I don't have no neighbors over here, let's say 10 miles, and no neighbors over here another 10 miles. So I'm living in the middle of nowhere. The only way I have is move out of here. As a matter of fact, I already started doing that. The San Juan Capistrano couple is under fire and headed to court for hosting Bible studies in their home. The city says the gatherings are illegal. Tonight, CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen spoke with the couple at the center of the controversy. In a quiet corner of San Juan Capistrano sits a home that City Hall calls a house of worship. And city leaders want the homeowners to stop their regularly scheduled sessions of Bible study. We're just gathering and enjoying each other's company and fellowship and uh, we, we enjoy studying God's Word. The couple has been hit with two citations recently adding up to $300 and if they continue the fine could go up to 500 There was no telephone call, knock on the door. The Froms say the city is requiring them to get a conditional use permit in order for them to continue with their meetings but doing so will take money because it requires traffic and environmental impact reports and making their home accessible to wheelchairs. This is also about a city uh, trying to get a family to pay fees, to pay fees and pay money to them just to be able to have friends over to read the Bible. Comprehensive land use plans completely ignore private property rights and give government the power to manage virtually every facet of development and business activity. This process transforms free markets into managed markets. And managed markets mean a managed society. But Americans are waking up and fighting back. Several communities have rejected Agenda 21, and hundreds more are learning how to convince their elected officials to get rid of this freedom-killing burden. Part 3 will illustrate ideas that work and some that do not. Be sure to watch Part 3.